And so again in this case, Iblis is asked by God so that we hear the answer. Why did you disobey me? And Iblis says, but it's obvious. How could I possibly bow to Adam? You created me of fire and created him of clay. You know, fire is much better than clay. How could fire bow to clay? That's what's behind us, right? That's what's behind us. And so God says, get me down from this. It's not for you to be arrogant here. Get out, for you are one of the meanest creatures. What is, what is the sin of Iblis? You know, I mean, look, look at this. Get out and you are rejected and cursed until the day of judgment. You know, this, this is really very strong. What did Iblis do just because he did not want to obey God? What's wrong with, I mean, we create, we make sins and we don't get the same treatment. What's the problem? What's the difference between us and what Iblis did? Can you think about it for a second? Because the Quran is going to tell us, and I'll show you, but you tell me what went wrong with what it least did. Okay, first we know that it was his arrogance that led him to reject God's command, right? Which is the opposite of humility. His arrogance, which is a big sin, okay? But we can be arrogant too, but we don't get treated that way. Why? His arrogance was led him to say that he is better than the other. And not only that, he is so invested in that belief that he is willing to disobey God's will, which is, according to Tawheed, the highest will, right? According to Tawheed, there is no will higher than the will of God. But by rejecting that will, what did Iblis do? He made his will higher than that of God. And by doing that, because he obeyed himself, not God, right? He rejected the command. What did he do when he did that? What was, yes? He uses own logic. He uses logic? He uses own logic. Yeah, what's wrong with that logic? Well, How does it sit with the basic tenets of Islam? Well, he, he called himself and not the Lord. Right, so but let's push, it, let's push it a step further. What does that mean? Did he call it? Not only that, remember what did we say was the core tenet of Islam? Tawheed. Tawheed means there is only one superior being and that is God, right? When Iblis decided to make his will superior to that of God, what did he do? He, he joined partners with God, even made his own will superior to that of God. In other words, he fell into what we call the sin of shit. Shirk is associating gods, other gods with God. And for God forgive, it does not forgive that partners should be set up with him, but he forgives anything else to whom he pleases. Um, so to set up partners with God is to divide us in most heinous. Very difficult translation. The bottom line is you cannot associate partners with God. And so if you follow the demand or the call of someone else against the call of God, then you've associated partners with God. And what does that mean? For example, and, and this is not just Islamic, by the way, it's also Abrahamic. Uh, some people will tell you that some people today worship worship money more than they worship God. What does that mean? They don't, you know, they, they don't do zakat. Uh, they cling to money and would do the wrong thing to keep it knowingly instead of doing what God had told them to do. And what else does it mean? What else does shirk mean? And why are we talking about Iblis? Aren't we done with it ages ago? And should we, should we not be talking about the Quranic logic instead of Satanic logic? But remember in the Quran, Satan says, I will continue uh, seducing the children of Adam. So if we understand this correctly, the seduction is ongoing with us so that we do the wrong thing. Well, what is the wrong thing? Bowing to Adam is not relevant to us. So what are we talking about here? Well, Imam Ghazali, you, many, of, many of you would know Imam Ghazali, who is a major scholar of medieval times, uh, looked at this uh, story and he wrote in his Ihya Aulum al very briefly, he said, look, if you think this is a 
story about something that happened God knows when, you know, and is not relevant to us. You've missed the point. He said, actually, <clears throat> this tells us what satanic logic is. So, if in today's society we apply the story, Al-Ghazali says, if you're a rich person and you think you're, a be you're better than a poor person, you've engaged in satanic logic. He says, if you're a white person and you think you're better than a red or a black person, you've committed satanic logic. And if you're a free person and you think you're better than a slave, because of course he was talking about his community and his society, you've committed satanic logic. Because you've developed that logic of arrogance, I'm better than, right? When God told us that we're all created of the same soul. And I today, in my society and community, would add to what Al-Ghazali had to say by saying, and if you're a man and you think you're better than a woman, then you've committed to that. Because God tells us that the closest to God in the sight of God are those who are more pious, and there's no way that somebody could tell me that of necessity men are more pious than women, right? So actually, this kind of uh, either racism or ethnic, ethnic bias, or gender discrimination, or you know all of these ills that we see in society, all of these things are not accepted under Quran. These are new uh, issues in some of the societies, but they're issues that the Quran addressed from the outset. You're all equal. I cannot look at you and say, you know, I like her because I like the shape of her face, and she is better than the rest of you. I could do that, but that's not fair. That's not just. That's why in Islam we worry about justice a lot, right? Because the Quranic idea, the Quranic logic says that we're all created of the same soul. And we distinguish ourselves by our actions, by our behavior, in terms of service to humanity and other things, not in terms of a hierarchy which is falsely created either by an individual in his own mind or by society. So that is why karama is called karama. Karama means dignity. And God in the Quran says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَ بَنِي Adam. We've given dignity to the children of Adam. Notice, it doesn't say we've given dignity to the men. Children of Adam. It doesn't say we've given dignity to Muslims. It says to the children of Anybody on this earth who's human has karama, and we have to respect that. That's part of what Islamic worldview is about. 